Welcome to episode 16 of Concise Game Reviews. I'm your host, Rally Car Delta, and today's review features Dragon Age The Veil Guard, developed by BioWare and published by Electronic Arts. I have a lot to cover today, thus I'm going to skip over most of the introduction. Just be aware that you can find the game on most major platforms, including Steam. Alright, on with the review. I've played all the previous BioWare Dragon Age games, and I've enjoyed each one of them, despite their flaws. I was very much looking forward to this one, especially considering how the story was left hanging at the end of the previous game, Inquisition. After spending significant time with the newest game, I've come away with decidedly mixed feelings. Let's cut right to the chase. Playing Dragon Age The Veil Guard feels like I'm playing two different games. Game number one is an action RPG with exciting dynamic combat, complete with interesting skill trees and a robust character creator. Game number two is a dialogue simulator with woefully underwhelming writing, unnatural delivery, and a terrible tendency to tell the player instead of show them. During my playtime with the game, I could never escape the feeling that the story side of the game, this would include the cinematic story sequences, the dialogue, the banter between the characters, was bolted on to the other half of the game, which was, for all intents and purposes of this conversation, an action RPG. Regardless, let's start with the ARPG side of the game. Dragon Age of the Veilguard feels like the culmination of the battle system that Bioware has been using since Mass Effect 3. The combat in this game is real-time, for the most part. Similar to other action-adventure games, the player has a mix of light and heavy attacks to use against their opponents, and of course special abilities that are on some kind of cooldown. The player can pause the action temporarily to command computer control partners to cast spells or perform certain actions, but the combat quickly goes back to real time. It should also be noted that most of the game occurs in these specialized combat zones. This Dragon Age game is decidedly not an open world experience. You can clearly see the foundation of how this game started development as a co-op action adventure game. You can tell the combat system received extra attention because, well, that's the core of the game. It's fun, it's dynamic, it feels good to play and it looks great on screen. Safe to say the combat system is my favorite part of the game. Now let's talk about the other side of the game, the role-playing side, so to speak. I don't know how else to describe this side of the game other than to say it's awkward. Most of the player dialogue and banter between the characters feels amateur when compared to other role-playing games. Critical moments in the story that should add depth or give us a reason to cheer for certain characters just don't work because the dialogue is so unnatural. Additionally, unlike previous Bioware games where the main character could emphasize how they feel about a certain situation, the dialogue selection here means nearly nothing. The clues on screen don't really match what the player character says in response. This problem extends to the majority of spoken dialogue in the game. It all feels constructed to be non-threatening, lifeless, and without any kind of friction. Because of that, the role-playing side of this Dragon Age game didn't work for me. Before I close up this review, I do want to mention that the visuals, backdrops, and overall appearance of the game is quite impressive. This world of Dragon Age looks great in 2024, even if I disagree with some of the more stylistic artistic choices. With that, we need to close this up. My bottom line is this. There's a great action RPG here that kept me entertained. That said, the role-playing side of this Dragon Age title left much to be desired. And with that, this is Relicar Delta signing out.